May I introduce you to Hi. Dr. Neshwat? Hi. She has a medical uh, a medical show for Jones Television, who I'm Good. working with now. Can she ask you just a really brief, brief question? Sure. You know, I've been back and forth to Haiti, volunteering there, especially after the earthquake. And I just wanted to ask you, what is your involvement and thoughts as far as education in Haiti? And I admire your work with the Haitian people, um, with your fund that I know that is going on now. But well, first. That's a good question coming from a doctor because you correctly sense we're much further along in building the health system than we are an education system. That is, uh, my UN deputy mm -hmm. and the person that I have put in charge of building the health system for the first time, Paul Farmer, has a huge operation there, and we have wonderful help from all over the world in healthcare. We still need it, but we're going to build Absolutely. a healthcare system, and we have a model. Where he and I did it in in Rwanda and Malawi mm -hmm. in Africa. We know we can do that. The, the problem with the, the education system is that half the people in Haiti have never gone to school, ever. Two-thirds of those who do go to school go to church schools, not public schools, and they have to pay tuition, which can be up to 40% of a Haitian family's income. Very so expensive. what we're trying to do now is to, first we're building a bunch of schools that are really good, that are can now serve as community shelters if the hurricanes hit the communities. So we're trying to escalate the school building over the house building. I think it's important. And then we are coming up with a plan to have universal enrollment for free with a meal. As what an a induction. blessing. That is amazing. And I think that's important because the Haiti has been bedeviled for decades by a system called the Rest of X system where these kids are sold into bondage. But by and large, there's not some evil international criminal syndicate that come get them. The parents have four kids or five and they can't feed them all and they sell one to someone who makes a promise they know they don't mm -hmm. intend to keep to feed, clothe, and send the child to school. And instead they turn them into a bonded indentured servant with no money. And if we could send all the kids to school and feed them a meal, it would have the benefit of getting rid of more than 90% of the kids being sold into bondage. So uh, there is no more important thing, and it's very important for their economic future, obviously, but on a, on a moral basis and to preserve the families, that's what we have to do. So right now we have a Paul Vallis, who is the superintendent of schools down in New Orleans and helped to rebuild them after Katrina, and a number of other people looking at this with the Haitians, helping us to come up with a system that would be fair to all these church schools mm -hmm. that have done a fabulous job over the years. We don't want to put them out of business, but, but obviously the kids that aren't there come from families that can't afford it. So what we need is some system that will keep them in school that we can fund for five years and that we know the Haitians can fund for themselves after we pull out. So that's the goal. It's very important. That's amazing. We'll run, Mr. President. Thank you. The right, other so thing you should know is they have a pretty good college system there. So we need to keep praying was, and keep donating. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, but you also, I would say this. Unlike the K through 12, mm -hmm. they actually had a pretty good college system because of the religious institutions of higher education and the state school was good, the university. So about really all we have to do there is to rebuild the st structures, get them more uh, qualified instructors and then just open the doors again. That's the one advantage they have over most, let's say, the African countries I work in at the same income. Mm -hmm. They did have a network of higher education, but it won't function until you got, <laughs> in a proper way, until you got the schools working. And it, along with your speech that's about to go on, higher education ultimately leads to better health for everyone. Yes, it does. Right. Thank you. It was a pleasure Bless meeting you, you President Clinton. Hello. Thank will. you. Thank you. And so they said, how did you do it? What did you do? What idea did you bring? And I always have the same answer, arithmetic. <laughs> the groundbreaking idea was arithmetic. I said, you know, I grew up in Arkansas. I went to public schools. I'm not very smart. I still think two and three is five. If it's five in Fayetteville it's, or Springdale or Little Rock, it's probably still five when you get to Washington bank accounts and do things like that in cities all over America, and he's helping me now in Haiti. So I believe in this, and 
I think we pay a terrible price when people don't understand basic economics. I'll just tell you, I've been all over the world now, and I am convinced that the most important question that we all have to answer now is the how question. We can all agree on how we'd like to come out, but getting from here to there is the trick. And one thing I'm convinced of is we need more arithmetic and less hot air. You can take it. Thank you. God bless you.